Hi, I'm Bronazorg, and this is the Hearts of Demons AMA, where I'll read off some questions submitted by you guys and answer them to the best of my ability. Now, a couple of things before we start. One, I'm going to try and avoid any, like, yes or no answers, even if that would be best suited for the question. I, I That wouldn't be a very interesting video, so, you know, whatever. We'll, we'll roll with it. Two, this is unscripted. So, I'll be answering these off the seat of my pants for the most honest answer. However, I tend to be really fucking vulgar a lot. So, if that bothers you, now's your chance to leave the video. Alright. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Alright, so the first question is, which of the demons would find your mother jokes the most funny? And who would cave your head in the quickest for making such a joke? So... I hate to be a bummer, but uh, most d demons don't do jokes very well. But if I had to, like, just off the top of my head, I'd say the Revenant would find them the most funny because he's the uh, only one with, like, a functioning human brain. Whereas Qu Quoll, the Arachnatron, would just, he'd be the one to just fucking cave your skull in. The brains have a very matriarchal society. And they refer to the females or the spider masterminds as mothers. So yeah, that would not go over well in in his eyes. Of the currently released and or planned to be developed playable characters in Hearts of Demons, which one is the most fun to work on? What are your favorite combinations of enemy sets and or map sets for each part of Hearts of Demons? Outside of Hearts of Demons, what is your favorite Doom mod of all time? So, this is three questions, and uh, I'm just going to do it all in one recording, but I'm going to answer these, like, separately, so I'll, like, pause to separate them or whatever. So, um, which one's the most fun to work on? That's, that's a hard question, because um, I generally don't work on anything if I'm not really feeling up to it. And kind of regardless of what I'm doing, I'm if I'm feeling up to it and I'm working on it, I'm having a good time. Out of, uh, just based on memory, out of the ones I've worked on so far, I would say the one I had the best time with, though, was probably Archvile. Just because of how, like, smoothly it flowed like there weren't a lot of hiccups so kind of i went in with a game plan i already knew what the hell i was doing and i didn't really have to like learn anything super difficult to do anything that archvile does on the flip side the least fun it would so far have to be either imp or revenant uh imp because i he, I just, I just don't have any like direction with him yet. I mean, there's still a lot for me to think on and consider when working on when working on Imp. And with Revenant, I, I've said this a couple times on Revenant, on Discord rather about Revenant before. But Revenant felt like a hod I made out of obligation rather than out of desire. So. A lot of the times when I'm working on Revenant, I, I feel that obligation rather than the desire. And like when you're feeling obligated to do something, it's it's just not fun. Like, is your job fun? Probably not. Is paying rent fun? Fuck no. Is is wiping your ass fun? Uh, sometimes. But these are all things you're obligated to do, so you're not really like really enjoying yourself because the whole time you're just thinking oh i have to do this or i'm gonna get kicked out or i'm gonna get fired or i'm gonna have poop in my ass like that's just it just it just like i i felt like i had to make revenant now i have made a lot of changes to revenant to make it more like a mod i would want to make and i do have fun playing it but yeah it's it's imp, imp or revenant are the least fun whereas archfile was the most fun I, I know I kind of I do kind of want to say Baron, but I feel like that's too easy an answer because Baron was a lot of fun to work on for the most part. But whatever. So what are my favorite combinations of enemy sets or map sets for each Hearts of Demons? OK, so this is all, this is kind of unfair because I made Legion specifically to pair it with my mods. So like in terms of the enemy set 
front, it's it's going to be Legion, like universally. Um, I I will shout out mods I used to use before I made Legion, though. So like, I used to use Colorful Hell with Baron specifically. Colorful Hell was a lot of fun because of how bosses drop backpacks. And in Baron, backpacks are progression items. So like they're soul gems, they're the they're the fanny packs, they're they're shit that like makes you stronger. So you can get really strong really fast, and that can be fun from time to time. And I would also play with um uh Doom Roguelike Arsenal Monsters or Durlamons, as I usually call it. And I would play with that because it was it's got a lot of variety and it's got some interesting monsters. And in terms of HOD stuff, it has some monsters that can just fucking instantly kill you, which isn't a ton of fun when you're playing something like lower level, but when you're playing something like HOD, it just kind of reminds you of your mortality that around the corner, even if you're at 3,000 fucking health with a shield, there's going to be a Nightmare Arch Vial at any time that could just kind of melt you instantly or a um a uh fuck I, I don't remember what they're called but there's a pain elemental variant in that that literally telefrags you that's its attack so it's just instant fucking death yeah one of those could be anywhere so those two for map sets though that's that's a lot harder because um I so a lot I know a lot of people like to use the HOD mods with slaughter maps because they're you know they're overpowered or whatever. And I I personally am not a big fan of slaughter maps. Uh they 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 turn to slogs a lot in my eyes. But I will shout out a few that I've liked. Like I like Combat Shock 2. I had a lot I've had a good time with various HODs and that. Um I liked New Gothic Movement, and I said it correctly this time. Two, New Gothic Movement 2. I usually call it New Gothic Order. It's New Gothic Movement 2. I like that with Baron specifically, because on one of the early maps, there's just a hallway of legitimately like 200 imps, and you have enough room to get a running start, so you can just trample through all of them, and it's it's a lot of fun to just kind of bowling ball your way through a humongous crowd of imps. Um, really anything with a lot of verticality is fun with Revenant because you can actually like fly around. I, I, so I have this problem where I don't remember a lot of the, I have maps in mind, but I don't know what wads they came from. Um, there's a couple of maps in like Back to Saturn X 2, I think, that Revenant's fun for because you can just kind of fly around and tell all the enemies to get fucked. But uh, Oropathy, I think it was called the French one. That was that was a good time with Arachnatron. I ran through that with Arachnatron, and I had a lot of fun with that. Um, but yeah, just just generally anything on the harder end, I would say I recommend with the Hearts of Demons mods, just because like a lot of them have like a progression where yeah, you start off really strong, but you don't start off like fucking godlike. So early game, you can die like decently easily comparatively and they tend to have a slower progression like slaughter maps which usually shower you in fucking backpacks 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 and megaspheres which gets you super strong super fast in all of them all right so outside of hearts of demons was your favorite doom mod of all time this the i don't I don't really have singular favorite anythings anymore. As I've gotten older and older, I've realized that, like, I don't fully like anything. Like, I everything I take is, like, a balanced package. Like, nothing is perfect. That's just how, that's just how life is. And by saying something is my favorite, I'm implying that, like, there's no flaws in it, which just isn't true. That said, there are a selection of mods that I do really, really like a lot. So instead of like saying, oh, this this mod here is my favorite, we'll, we'll just go over some of the ones I play outside of my own. So like, I really like Final Doomer Plus, specifically the Hellbound class. Uh, if you haven't played Final Doomer, go, go do that. 
I like that a lot. Uh, Fast Spins is really good. Go play that. Johnny Doom is incredible. Go play that. Uh, X Weapon Hellstrom is one of my favorites. Specifically, the weapons only version. I think the like full version, the enemies are way too overtuned. And there's even more weapons in the full version to the point of there being too fucking many. So just just play the weapons only version and pair it with like pair it with Legion or Durlamons. Don't don't pair it with like something like Colorful Hell. You'll get overwhelmed. Um let me think. There's this old mod called Modes of Destruction. I mention it from time to time whenever favorite mods comes up, and I'm I've always been a big fan of that. Um, I was actually thinking about this today at work because I saw this question and I'm like, what, what all hideous destructor, obviously, like, I feel like that goes without mention, uh, guncaster, specifically guncaster, not guncaster vindicated. I know a lot of people like the more balanced nature of vindicated. I don't, I, I prefer OG. Um, let me think. I feel like they're. Might be one I'm forgetting, but I I can't think of it right now, so I'm not going to worry about it. All right. Who amongst all the HOD demons would fare the best in a slap battle slash slap battle tournament? Would it be matchup dependent? Would the imp be not the worst? So I know it says demons, but I'm going to include the Revenant and Quoll, the Arachnotron. I'm going to say that every time. In this, because they're technically not demons, but I'm sure by demons you mean, like, protags. But anyway, uh, so the Revenant would be the best, because he has the longest arms. And under Rage and Berserk, he also probably has the hardest slap. Whereas the, um, the best, or the worst, rather, would be, would be Quoll. By, by a landslide like the imp would be able to just slap his shit silly because so hod arachnotrons i don't really have a set like depiction for them so if we go off of their depictions in every doom game which is doom 2 doom 64 and doom eternal they don't even have fucking arms half the time so quoll with no arms isn't slapping anybody and in times when they do have arms they're stubby as shit, so he's not slapping anybody. Plus, he's a brain, and if you know Legion at all, you know brains are weak to melee. So he's just he's just getting slapped. He's just getting fucking slapped. That's just all there is to it. Quoll loses. It's not a matter of fucking anybody wins. It's just Quoll loses. All right, this is another triple one, but I'm gonna take these one at a time. What was the most difficult thing to make in terms of code, spriting, etc., from your experience making HOD mods? Hmm. Uh. God, HUDs. No, HUDs aren't, like, difficult. They're just tedious because there's no way to, like, visualize what you're coding. You kind of have to just type in numbers, boot up the game, see where things are on the screen close the game, change the numbers around, boot up the game, see where they are now, and you just repeat that over and over again until you get what you want. Um, but, like, it's not super difficult. Uh, God, what was the hardest? Because I've, I've struggled. I, I have a hard time with, uh, I've had, I'm, I've had a lot of struggles learning coding, just because, like, if something, I have, if I can't, like, baseline understand something, it it frustrates me greatly. Because I'm, I was a very smart kid, so I, like, very quickly understood, like, everything I ever had were, was taught or read. And I had, still have an extremely high reading comprehension, but, like, I'm nowhere near as quick or as sharp as I used to be. And... So when I come into concepts that I don't understand right away, I get frustrated. Like it's it's I'm basically coming to terms with my own stupidity, more or less. So it's it really slows down my learning. And I've I've had it on like 
all aspects of modding at one point or another. Um, but I'm, 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 I'm go, I'll go with coding. Like, I don't, I don't really sprite, like, I don't draw sprites. I, I pose models and take screenshots and then use those as sprites. Well, I render images. I don't really take screenshots. And that, that's easy, but tedious. Um, sound stuff, I just, I just pick sounds from other games and use them. Like, that's, there's really, it's not, it's not hard. Good sound work is hard. And, um... Elite Spy usually comes in and bails my ass out when it comes to good sound design. Because if he finds something extra erroneous, he'll be like, listen here, you motherfucker. And then he'll come in, make the sound ten times better, and give it to me. And I'll use that. So I, I always, I greatly appreciate that he does that. And I, I don't feel like I thank him enough. So I'm going to thank him very publicly here. Um, thanks, Spy, for always bailing my ass out when it comes to poor sound design. And your thought. Um, yeah, it's it's got to be code. Just because there's there's still a lot of things in code I don't understand. Like, things that are considered, like, really basic and entry level. Like, structs and arrays. I have no idea what those are. I, it's like, oh, you could do this thing so much easier with a struct. And it's like, I don't, I don't fucking know what that is. I... I've had it explained to me, and I still have no fucking idea. I, like, like, when I adapted the doorbuster code from Hideous Destructor into Feet on the Ground and Soldier Z, that was easily one of the hardest things I had to do, because Hideous Destructor's code is written by somebody who actually understands programming, and I, that is very much not me. And it does, it does a lot, like... Like, I can, I can read it and kind of understand what it's doing, but I don't know how Matt got Matt, the creator of Hideous Destructor, the one developer. A lot of people seem to think that Hideous Destructor has a team working on it, but no, it's, it's just Matt. Um, I don't know how Matt got there. I don't know how he learned that, but I, I can kind of tell what it's doing very vaguely. Enough that I could adapt it to work in generically in my mods. And no, I didn't just steal the code. I asked him on Discord, like, circa 2018, if I could use it. And he's like, yeah, go ahead. And if you can somehow make it even better, go go for it and let me know. And it's, I'm just like, you have you have no idea what kind of fucking idiocy you're dealing with here and, and me. So yeah, I, I, guess, I guess code. Code's been the most difficult to make. Because the rest of the... I don't touch spriting because I can't draw for shit. I could... I could maybe learn it. Like, I, I paint miniatures, so, I, like, I understand, like, color theory and shit like that. But, like, drawing is a skill that's always eluded me. And spriting is, like, a subset of drawing. Like, just because you can draw doesn't necessarily mean you can sprite. Because spriting is drawing with big fucking squares. As I, I explained to an older coworker once. So yeah, co coding coding's been the most difficult. We'll we'll go with we'll go with that. Specifically adapting hideous destructors doorbuster stuff to work in my mods. Other than that, there hasn't been anything like that's been a super major roadblock that was that I overcame that was difficult to overcome. Cause most of the time it's just Look at another mod that does the thing, see how it does it, adapt, or look it up on the ZDoom wiki. I, okay, so I, I, I guess you could, there is an elephant in the room, and that's Feet on the Ground's multiplayer code. I don't, I have no idea where to even fucking start with making that mod work in multiplayer like it's supposed to. Well, is planned to, I should say. Like, I don't. I don't even know where to fucking begin. I was initially going to uh, commission somebody to do it for me. But then the person I was going to commission ended up getting completely kicked out of the community recently. If you know, you know. Lore-wise, which of the demons of the four existing, Revenant, Arachnatron, Archvile, Baron of Hell, has the most realistic reason to fight their own faction, the demons? Um, so I'm not gonna lie, I don't 
fully understand this question, but just based on the um, sentence structure and the upside down question mark, I think I know who this is from, and I know he struggles with English a lot. So I'm going to try and my best to parse this out. Uh, I'm sorry if you're watching and I don't quite give you the answer you were expecting, but um, I, I'm going to try. So has the most realistic reason to fight their own faction. Um, so I, I gave them, I gave all the characters what I considered to be an at least passable motivation for them to fight other demons. I was actually expecting a question like this to come up at some point, and my answer to it is usually um, demon infighting exists. And... To me, that tells me demons are very, very quick to just fly off the handle and fucking try to kill each other. So, you know, going off of that, this is kind of how I came to the Baron's original motivations. What if they, like, did that, but actually had some thought behind it? And that's how the Baron's motivations came to be. And then, obviously, from there, it's kind of spiraled out of control. But to quote Supernatural... Is it jumping the shark if you never come down? But I, I guess if I had to, like, think about it super critically, which, I mean, I I guess I'd go with Quo the Arachnatron has the most, like, realistic reason. Because it's it's his job. Because, like, he's he's like an Inquisitor or something. His, his job is to hunt down unruly demons and traitor arachnatrons and in some cases traitor uh spider masterminds and kill them to set an example to the other demons and arachnatrons and other brains i'll just say brains to set an example to the other demons and brains to get back in fucking line so like it's it's his job he he doesn't have any kind of attachment or anything to the demons at all he views them as literally sub uh I can't really say subhuman because they're not human and Quoll's not he, he's He views the demons as below him, more or less. He thinks they're an unintelligent, violent species that needs to be controlled to get anything done. Because that's, that's just what he's been told. That's, that's how the brains feel about the demons. That's just kind of how it goes. Ow. That was my desk. Desk coon minus 100 hit points. Um... With, I guess, the next most realistic being the Revenant, because his whole thing is he remembers that he was human, so he's just continuing to fight the good fight. He's just incredibly fucking unstable, so he'll just kind of... If he flies off the handle, which he will, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Um, He, he just kind of kills everything around him. So he'd rather surround himself with demons, so that when he's killing stuff, he's at least helping humans fight the good fight, more or less. So yeah, th I guess I guess my answer to which one has the most realistic motivation would be the Arachnatron. What was the most complicated mod that you make in terms of ideas? Um Hmm. Hmm. That's that's a good question cuz like so I I know a lot of people out there Probably find my, like, I don't have any, like, actual confirmation of this. It's just kind of a hunch I have based on what I've seen others say about other mods over the years. But I, I have a feeling there are a lot of people out there that think because my mod takes more than two buttons to play that my mods are overly complicated. And at one point, at least with Baron and Revenant, I, I would be inclined to agree. They, they, are, they were a little overcomplicated there for a while. That's why Necromancy got cut from Baron, and that's why Magic and Human Guns got cut from Revenant. Was to keep them, you know, simpler. Still more complicated than your average Doom foray, but still simpler than what they were. Uh, but I, if, hmm, you know, I'm, I'm going to go with Feet on the Ground. I would say Feet on the Ground is definitely the most complicated mod that I've made, just because it's, a lot of my other mods are really straightforward in their everything. It's like, it's go here, point the screen, hit the fire. Depending on what weapon or spell you're on, you do the thing. 
Whereas on feet of the ground, there's a lot of different factors that go into it. You have like your stamina controlling your recoil. You have what character you pick changes how you react to certain things. Healing is obscure. Your health is obscured. Healing is takes time and is a separate like button. Hell, you have to push a button to pick things up. Like there's not to say the weapon maintenance and how all that factors into everything that goes on. There's a lot that goes on every time you pull the trigger under the hood and feet on the ground. And like, I know, I know not everyone's going to appreciate that and not everyone's going to care, but a lot of thought went into um, exactly what should be calculated and what should be arbitrarily decided. Because like, there's going to be some arbitration just for the, the fact of going... 100% super realistic on anything kind of makes for a bad game and like I'm not I know some people like it when their games are hyper fucking complicated for the sake of being hyper complicated but I don't I I like my games to be you know fucking playable I like my games to be games not OS's not hyper immersive fucking hyper sims I, I like my games to be games like sorry system shock but like you're, you're an example of what I consider a not great game because you're more of an OS than a game. You're a great game and I love you, but like you're not a great game and I hate you. It's a complicated relationship. Um, that, That's just one example. That's like the most famous example I think we can all connect to of what I mean by that. And it's, it's an example that I have where I don't have contempt for the game in question. Um... But yeah, I, I don't I don't really want that for my games. Which is why like there's there's still even even with feet on the ground being like as complex and as intricate as it is, I still feel like it's easier than like it gets compared to Hideous Destructor a lot and it they're in the same like general genre i would say but hideous destructor is a lot more complicated but also a lot better put together and thought out and it's just a just a better mod overall but feet feet on the ground fills its niche of i want to play a tactical mod but i don't want to go quite as complicated as hideous destructor but i want to be more complicated than base doom or anything that's vanilla like which, which I mean, that's why I made it is because I there that was a niche that I wanted filled, and nothing else was filling it. So I'm like, I'll fill it myself. So yeah, uh, a, an answer is definitely gonna be feet on the ground. How the idea of HOD started in your mind? So I, I actually I've been waiting for this question since I started modding because I I'm sure a lot of people have thought about it, and um. So, ever since I started playing games, I always liked I always liked monsters. Like I I like I like myself a good bestiary, and there are certain types of monsters that I find much cooler than others. And in turn, not only do I think, let me try that again. Not only do I think that Doom has like an excellent bestiary, one of the best in first person shooters, like period. I can't say all games because RPGs exist, and just by the nature of being RPGs, they have better beast trees. But in terms of first-person shooters, you can't get better than Doom. Like if if I'm wrong, and there's a game, there's a first-person shooter out there that has an even better like monster manual, so to say, it than Doom does. Please point me to it. I would love to play it. But um, and and when it comes to Doom easily my favorite monster is the baron of hell so just just keep that in the back of your mind my favorite monster is the baron of hell and i've always liked monsters fast forward this is ever since i was a kid fast forward to me being in middle school lord of the rings the third age comes out it has an evil mode and in evil mode for those of you that haven't played the game it lets you play through select battles as the monsters instead of as the heroes and your objective is to kill the heroes and it is the coolest fucking thing i've ever seen a video game to that point because i i had never seen anything like it before i haven't really seen anything like it since either like it seems like such a simple thing like there's plenty of things that are like oh you can play as the 
bad guy faction, but it's like, it's, there's no, in evil mode, there's no, like, story or anything to it, it's just, it just throws you in the battles, and there's even a couple of battles that are exclusive to evil mode, like, there is a battle where you're controlling a Nazgul on one of the fell beasts, and it's a battle that does not happen in the main campaign, it's only in evil mode, and that's really cool, and obviously the goat, the absolute fucking goat, of evil mode is the Balrog battle because you just kind of instantly destroy all of the characters outside of Gandalf who takes like four turns to beat down with your sword as he feebly tries to hit you with his like holy lightning move that does like a tenth of your health because you have some fucking massive health pool because you're a Balrog for fuck's sakes and it's just it's really cool and I always want to see more stuff like that in games the monsters in, like, Final Fantasy Tactics are, like, some of my favorite to mess around with, too, even if they're, like, really underpowered in that. C- c- kinda. T- Tiamats are... T- Tiamats are fucking ridiculous, but... I-, I could I could go on about that for a while. I won't... I'll, I'll spare you. But, um... So then, fast forward a little bit more to... I start playing Doom. Because, like, Doom... Obviously, like... I, I was born in 92... So, like, I've always known about Doom my entire life, because Doom's been making a splash in the media pretty much ever since it came out, up to current, honestly. Like, people still... Outlook... Out, uh, bleh, 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 media outlook... Bleh, oh, my God, fuck. Media outlets still fucking talk about Doom from time to time. Like, it's kind of insane. I mean, it is one of the most important games of all time, so that's not surprising honestly, but, um, anyway, so I've always known about Doom, but, like, to me, it was, like, this PC game, and, like, it was, PC games were always super alien to me until I was, like, an adult, just because of, like, how inaccessible early PC gaming was to, to me, and, like, even when we got a, like, family computer, my dad was always, like, really restrictive about what we could do on it because he was paranoid about everything gives you viruses, which, like, yeah, back in the day, everything kind of did, but whatever. So fast forward to me being in high school, and Doom comes out for the 360, and um, I'm playing it at a friend's house, and we're, it's like, the we're just like, man, this is the fucking best game ever made. I can't believe this fucking took us this long to play this. Because, like, you know... We didn't, we didn't have, like, the GBA version. We didn't have, like, we didn't have a fucking Saturn. We didn't, we never saw the PS1 version. Like, I know there's been, there's lots of console versions of Doom, but, like, I just never had access to them. Hell, like, I didn't, I didn't even want to really play it until I was a teenager, because, like, I had a thing about games with blood in them when I was a kid. Like, it was, I can't really explain it, because, like, nowadays, it's just like, yeah, whatever. Ultraviolent games are literally fucking everywhere, but, like, it was, it was a different time. I was, a, I was a different kid. I was a different guy, you know? Whatever. It was, it was the 2000s and the 90s, like, you know? But anyway, this is, this is all coming together. I swear to God, this is. So fast forward a little bit more. I see said, said friend I would play 360 Doom with messages me on Facebook. Specifically, he posts a video on my wall of Brutal Doom. And, like, before before seeing this, I always knew Doom modding was a thing. Like, uh, again, in, in high school, I always had this weird thing about mods where I thought they were bad because you were changing the game and, like, that's not what the developers intended and all this stupid shit I'm sure you've all heard before at some point. Obviously, my viewpoint has changed, but, like, that's just how I was in high school. Afterward, after high school, though, after messing with Morrowind modding, my uh, my opinion changed drastically. And that's about when I saw the Brutal Doom video. And like, like I was saying, I always knew Doom mods were a thing. I just... I didn't know they could be as that, like, all-encompassing. Because, like, I, there's... Obviously, like, there's a lot of people that say Brutal Doom sucks. And they will refuse to give it any fucking credit for anything. And they're really fucking dumb, because, like, the reason why Brutal Doom works is, like, an entry point Doom mod, and why it gets so many people into Doom modding, is because it's familiar enough that we recognize everything in it as Doom, 
but it changes fucking everything. So it really simultaneously shows the scope of what you can do with Doom modding. Like, it gives you a little taste. It's just, it's an appetizer to the really good shit that's out there. And that's what it was to me. So, of course, Brutal Doom gets me into Z-Doom, which gets me into GZ-Doom, which gets me into Project Brutality. Project Brutality has a... As you you guys probably know, but for the, like, three of you that don't, Project Brutality has these demon rune items that drop that turn you into a demon temporarily. Now, if you remember what I said earlier about me in evil mode and playing as monsters and thinking monsters are cool, yeah, I was fucking all for that. I was like, hell yeah, this is the coolest fucking thing ever. And one of the runes, of course, turns you into a baron of hell. And I'm just like, I'm fucking, like pissing myself in excitement because like i'm playing as like my favorite doom monster and i'm just tearing shit up all the time fast forward a little bit more doom 4 comes out and d4d comes out and the multiplayer for doom 4 of course lets you play as a baron as hell and d4d also had you playing as a baron of hell so i'm like and this is where this is where it all finally comes together I'm like, what if that, but the whole game was that? So then, I start searching for mods that let you play as Barons of Hell. That's when I come across Empathy. Empathy is a really old mod that lets you pick any monster, and you play as it. It's super fucking basic, though. Like, you are the size of that monster, which has lots of issues. You have the health of that monster, and you can literally only do what that monster does. So as the Baron, you have a thousand health. Uh, all the monsters share an ammo type called mana, which is that's where the idea for the mana came from. And you can just throw Baron balls. And Baron balls are fucking ginormous. They're hitboxes, just for the record. So like you, it's really impractical to do fucking anything. And I'm like. This kind of sucks, but what if, what if I learned how to mod and I, I expanded on this? Then I later, then I do some research of, is there any mods that specifically let you play as a Baron of Hell? And like, that's the whole point of the mod and expand upon it. Cause I didn't, I didn't want to reinvent the wheel, so to say. Well, um, you know, Doom Rampage ex edition exists. But it's fucking awful and doesn't really do what it says it does on the tin. So I'm like, okay, so this doesn't exist. All right. So, you know, I start to learn how to how to make mods. I throw together the story of, like, you're the doom guy of Baron of Hells. The Baron, if you will. The Baron of Hell. Give him this storyline about how... The brains came and took over hell because, like, Arachnatrons and Spider Masterminds always stuck out to me as being not very demon like. So I'm like, what if they weren't demons? What if they're interdimensional, like, invaders and they just took over hell and now they're trying to take over Earth? And e e so you're starting to see where all the concepts are coming together and come, they're, they're taking shape. And yeah, then, then I'm like, okay, so like, Barons, right? They gotta be able to do more than just throw Baron Balls. The Doom 4 influence comes in, because in Doom 4, they can do shit like ground pound, jump around, and uh, charge up a fireball to make it explosive. The other spells come into play. In some other mods, namely Colorful Hell, sometimes Barons can, like, breathe fire. Emulation comes into play. And then I'm like, okay... So, like, I have some spells, but what if what if barons used weapons? What kind of weapons would they actually use? The guns come into play. So, three to four weeks later, the first Hearts of Demons baron version sees the light of day, hits up the uh, Z-Doom forum, and, uh, yeah, frickin' seven years later, here we are. I'm ans finally answering the question of... How did I, how did Hod start? Like, 
I know you were probably hoping for like a quick, concise answer, but there's a lot of ground to cover. So I, I feel like it just need to be it need to be covered. So yeah, that's that that I, I think that's everything. Yeah, that yeah that'll that'll do, pig. That'll do. What's your personal favorite hod? Oh, this is this is hard because you're basically telling me to look at my children and pick out my favorite, which like I don't I don't make mods I don't like. I know probably earlier in this video I don't know how exactly I'm gonna order these. These are all recorded individually, but I know probably earlier I said something about how like I made Revenant out of obligation rather than desire, but I still made it the way I wanted to make it. It still has the idea of how I feel like a playable expanded Revenant should play. And um I I largely make the mods in to in ways that I would want to play them. So I, I like them all. So picking just one to be like my favorite is really difficult. Also just just for the sake of transparency, I'm 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 assuming I'm gonna go that like I'm just going to pick from the HODs because technically Legion and Feet on the Ground are like HOD mods in the sense of they're canon to HOD, but they're not HOD proper. But anyway, um, shit. Uh, God, it really depends on my mood because they all, they all scratch a different itch to me. Um, this, this may sound like a bit of a cop-out answer or a bit of a, oh yeah, no shit answer but i'm 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 gonna go with baron just because like baron i feel like is the most well realized of the hods and there's just how everything works in that is so like in line with what i want out of it and what i want out of like feeling like a baron of hell like all the gun feedback is like perfect for what i want all the spells feel like perfect for what i want them to be except maybe catastrophe but like eh, I'll, I'll 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 cross that bridge when i get there like just 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 moving in baron feels super good to me and i'm really glad that lud slash ace was was able to get the movement feeling as good as he did before he unfortunately before we we went our separate ways and um and the trampling feels real good and the melee feels awesome and just 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 everything about Baron is right. Everything feels right. And there's nothing I can point at to it anymore and go like this feels wrong. I need to fix this, but don't know how. Because that's I I've done it. I've I've done that already with Baron. It's Everything I feel like has needed to be fixed, tweaked, or removed has been fixed, tweaked, or removed. Like, it's right where I think it should be, and it feels it feels really good to me. And so that's probably why it's my favorite. I, I feel like I should expand on this question a little bit to say why the others my, aren't quite up to that same standard. And a lot of it has to do with a lot of them have like major, maybe not major, but they have like some major issues to me that I either haven't quite gotten around to fixing or that I don't feel like I can fix just yet. Like Archfile, Archfile is, you know, brand new, more or less. Like it's it's been like three weeks now and I've been working on it a little bit here and there, but like. Well, if, you, if you're on Discord, you've seen me, you know. I'm stuck on some certain aspects of it. It's missing some features, and the balance is just totally fucked. Like, even for a Hearts of Demons mod, Archvile's balance is totally fucked. Um, so that, that kind of holds it back to me. Arachnatron is kind of clunky in how it controls, and... Um, there, there are certain key features that have been planned but not implemented that I'm having kind of cold feet on implementing because, like, it feels fine as is. Like, it, it still needs some ironing out and some polish, but it feels mostly fine. It's it's probably my second favorite. 
it just it just has some quality of life quoll issues, if you will, that need to be addressed. With and then Revenant Revenant has I I really wish I could properly describe Revenant because Revenant just something about it feels super wrong to me and I cannot figure out what it is. Like as every time I throw myself at Revenant, I do all these tweaks and overhauls, I add more upgrades, I like mess with the visuals, I mess with the HUD, and like everything individually feels good and okay but like as a whole package it just doesn't it, it's something about it just isn't doing it for me so that's why revenant's not my favorite because like there's just something inherently wrong with it that i can't quantify properly that nobody else seems to see because revenant is a lot of people's favorite hods which that's respectable i can understand why it has a lot of fun movement and you're really powerful and a really like interesting way but i it's just something about it just doesn't do it for me and i don't know what it is and that's really frustrating because like i'm the one that fucking made it you think i would know every fiber of its being like the back of my hand but like i just just something about it just isn't doing it for me and i cannot for the life of me figure out what so yeah and the short answer in summary i guess it's 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 barren Baron, Baron is the goat. It's my favorite. It's the best. That's I know that's that's probably a really boring answer or like a really obvious answer, but you know sometimes the truth is boring. That's just how it is sometimes. It has been a while. I have not seen you here or on Twitch. Hoping you are doing fine enough. Eager to see what comes next for you, for your different projects. I botched the reading of that a little bit. Cause like, it's a little, it's a little broken. I'm assuming English second language, so that's fine. I, I, I understand the struggle. I can't learn other languages for shit, so you're already doing better than me for having English and something else. But um, I know this one's not really a question, so I'll, I'll parse it as, hey, where you been? Are you doing okay? And like, yeah, I'm. I'll be honest, I won't go into too much detail, because that's not really that's not really the purpose of this video, but I'll be honest, I have not been doing great, um, life's been really rough for the last, like, year or so, um, my wedding's coming up in two months, and that's been a lot of stress, uh, I've been having a lot of medical issues, and I, I recently had to move, and I've been adjusting to the new place and whatnot. So, like, and, and all sorts of, like, little stuff. Frustrations with my job. Frustrations with my relationship. Frustrations with my friends. You know, like, life life has been not super great recently. It's it's getting better. Um, Once the wedding's over, that'll be a huge stress off my mind. But things have been really stressful and not great. So, I've kind of been pushing modding and content creation to the back burner and i'm only just now feeling like focused enough and motivated enough to actually like start doing stuff again so you know think i'm doing i'm doing okay i've been better i i have been worse like high school happened so i've been worse but i'm i'm, I'm doing better than i have been I have not been, I've not really been fine, though. I'll, I'll be honest. Um, but I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad you, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're asking. I'm, I'm glad someone is worried enough to ask, or state, I guess, would be more accurate. But I'm, I'm glad someone is worried enough to ask, and it, uh, I mostly operate on the internet under the assumption that nobody really gives a shit about me or what I'm doing. Because, like, you know, 90% of people you meet don't give a shit about you. That's just how life is. So it's it's really it's really refreshing and encouraging to hear that somebody, like, kind of actually does give a shit. So th thank you. Thank you for your concern. I am, I am doing, I'm doing fine-ish now. Um, as for what comes next, because I'll also, I'll also parse this as a, like, what's next. So right now I'm kind of, I'm focusing on finishing up some stuff in legion 
like expanding some of the missing monster abilities like ice imp special attacks and like ice arch vile defensive options and I'm tweaking spawners and shit at shit stuff spawners and shit and stuff and I'm I'm planning out the flame succubus stuff and uh after that I'm not 100% sure like there's a lot of work to be done on a lot of mods and like I I also have you know I'm always having new mod ideas floating around in my head like I was floating around the idea of Hearts of Demons Doom Slayer on Discord not too long ago, like what, last week? Week before that, as of the time of this recording? So, you know, th- maybe expect that in the near future. Maybe expect that in the far future. Expect that at some point in the future, honestly. And, um, really though, I'm, I'm, I'm focused on ironing out some of the, like, issues I'm having with all my mods. And maybe even a little something for Baron. I don't know. There's, there. I I got plans. I got plans in the pipeline. So just kind of keep an eye here. Keep an eye on the forums. Keep an eye on Discord. Keep an eye on um, Doom World. I recently started opening up threads on Doom World. And as I update mods, I'll open up more threads for them there. I'm not like migrating to Doom World or anything. I'm just deciding to exist on both z doom and doom world at the same time so keep an eye out for me there um yeah as for as for twitch i feel like i should address the twitch issue i haven't i work second shift i work uh i work 1 30 to 11 30 p.m and my wife also works second shift and she works 3 30 to 1 30 a.m so, between the time I, and when I stream, I have to stream when I get off work, because I, I sleep all day. Like, I, I sleep before work. And, um, so I stream at night, and just, just because of the time, and I have to go pick her up from work, because she doesn't drive, and I do. So it doesn't really, it didn't really leave me with a really, like, convenient time slot for streaming, and, like, streaming was, like, really fucking really kind of stressful like I don't like doing things with people looking over my shoulders and feel and what it feels like judging me for every little thing that I do and streaming is basically you're doing that like willingly so it was really like stressful and exhausting to me and I'd only ever get like one or two people per stream so like it was it was just kind of too much work for not enough like benefit to me maybe I'll come back to it like, like I said, I just recently moved, and our new place is a lot smaller, but we do plan on getting a house soon. Maybe when I get the house, I can, like, soundproof a room and, like, get a real streaming setup, and, like, maybe I'll start it again then. Maybe I'll start it again soon, because I've, I've had I've had other people ask me about Twitch, too, and it's it's making me consider and go back to streaming, but for now, I'm I'm considering myself retired from streaming, for now, at least. Maybe I'll come back to it. Maybe I won't. I don't. I don't really know. Maybe I'll gauge some interest in the various circles I run in. I don't know. But yeah. So, long story short, yeah, I'm I'm doing fine. Just haven't been feeling up to any kind of content creation. Is all. Until now, obviously, with the making of this video. But thank thank you thank you very much for your concern. It it really means a lot to me. Do any of the demons derive any sort of entertainment from the recreational use of human firearms? Would the imp like to fire a ZM-66 downrange? Would the archerly casually slam fire a pump action in his free time, etc.? So, no. Uh, just, just straight up no. Not, not, that's not really how demons work. They don't, they don't, like, really get bored because they, there's an actual purpose to their existence, which is you know, punishing damned souls. So their time is usually with that, and when it's not, they uh, kind of just beat the piss out of each other. A lot of them also just straight up um, find using firearms to be, like, pretty much blasphemous. So, especially, especially Archviles. Um, 
And in the few cases where a demon would use firearms, they'd, they'd use demonic arms. They wouldn't use human arms. That said, there are cases of occasionally very crafty imps will scavenge and figure out how to use firearms. And will use them a bit, but they never like reload them or anything like that. And it's not really something they do for fun. It's something they do to just kind of cause mayhem. Also, for the um, people in the audience, the ZM-66 is the DRM-ridden, space-age, piece-of-shit assault rifle from Hideous Destructor. So, it's, it's, it's not a real gun or anything like that. Which HOD, in your opinion, the biggest pain in the butt to work on? I, I feel like I got this question before. No, before it was uh, which mod is the most complicated. So in terms of being a pain in the ass, uh, it's definitely Revenant. Revenant is done like entirely through overlays. So they're, how do I, how do I explain this in a way that not technical people could understand? Basically, there, there's no like actual weapons in Revenant. It's all, it's all done through images, more or less. That's, uh, there's, there's people out there who do have the technical know-how and they're like, fucking bronazorg that's a terrible explanation but that's that's basically what it is the the weapons themselves don't like exist and as you can imagine working with that is such a big ass pain but obviously the payout is you can shoot and punch at the same time also that hud holy shit okay so there's a lot going on in the revenant hud and uh you know all that functions and all those color options and all the other stuff going on all that was not easy to get working and not easy to get looking right additionally revenant has a custom font i made it that's it's not a font you can go out and download or anything like that i drew each letter and number and punctuation mark in that font to make it like fit with the hud this was a very arduous and tedious task but but i did it. it 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 paid off i don't know why the menus are all like fucked like if you've played you've noticed the menus are kind of fucked for some reason but like i i have i have no idea why that is but yeah so it's it's definitely revenant okay so this next one is a just a shitload of questions in one well and some of them seem kind of trolly but I'm also, I'm pretty sure I know who submitted this one, and they are not, they are not one to fuck around. So, we'll, we'll, we'll tackle these one at a time. So, first up is, how can the Archviles regenerate their mana supply on their own? Uh, I, I hate to, I hate to break it to you, but they just can. There's not, there is no, there's, there's no, like, biology lesson here. Mana is literally just magic energy, and they can just produce it, just just because they're archviles. Like that's it. That's that's really all there is to it. How frail are the archviles without the bio without the biomantic reinforcement aura? How do they compare to the imps in terms of physical strength? So, all demons don't really like follow normal laws of biology. Because they're they're unnatural beings, just kind of made from like soul matter and sin and evil, and they're they don't biologically make any sense. Like they're missing organs. Some of them have redundant organs. Obviously, they have different blood colors. Like like the red in our blood comes from the iron, whereas like barren blood is green and there isn't really a solid explanation as to why that is but um so even without biomantic reinforcement uh they're still extremely durable like you you would not be able to like take one down a few shots you would still need like an entire magazine's worth of like handgun ammo to take down an arch file and in terms of physical strength, comparing them to imps, um, imps, so imps are generally, like, peak human performance. They're not, like, superhuman or anything, but, like, 
high-end human performers. They're not like strongman levels of strong, but like like an athlete strong, like like a basketball player strong, professional, not like Olympian, but like a professional athlete. So, um, arch vials are still bigger by quite a bit, and just the arch vials are still stronger than imps, just from the merit of being like twice the fucking size. How can the arch vial utilize holy magic without killing himself? Well, he can't, technically, like it harms him, but um, he's he's very. He's he's doing it extremely carefully. Like like I said, it still hurts him just because he still has to like channel the holy energy, but like he's just powerful enough that he can handle that with only taking some harm. Like if it was a lesser demon, it would absolutely just instantly fucking kill them. And he's not unleashing like the full force of that magic. Like that's why he there's no holy apex spell because if he tried to use the apex rune with holy magic that would absolutely fucking just instantly kill him on the spot just like thinking about it hurts him so it's basically the answer is he can't but it just doesn't instantly kill him what is the origin of soul magic i i don't what what? I don't really I don't really know what you're asking. Like what do you mean what's the origin? Like it's it's magic. Like what's the source of any spell? Like just some fucking demon at some point wrote it. Like I don't I don't really know what to tell you here. I I want to say it's magic. I don't have to explain shit, but like I don't I I don't even really fully understand this question. Like I'm not even sure how to parse it. Like, there's been a couple of these where I'm just like, I don't really know what you mean, but this one I'm like, triple, like, what do you, what do you mean, what's the origin of it? Like, I, I don't know, someone made it, some demon made it, like, that. that's really all there is to it. Are the spiders a unified faction as opposed to the Hellspawn? Yes, 100%. They're, they're their own, like, society, they're their own, like, they have their own social structure, they're super matriarchal. I've mentioned that before, but I'm, I'm saying it again. They're a matriarchal society. The females, obviously the spider masterminds, rule over the males, the arachnotrons. And, uh, yeah, that, that organization is part of what was able to make them just kind of sweep through hell like they did. That and their natural resistance to any form of attack demons have. But... Also the organization. How much of an individual Quoll is? Does he have any personal agency beyond serving the mothers? I mean, he's as much of an individual as you or I are. It's not like the the, the spiders slash the brains. I, I've been switching back and forth what I call them. Um, they're not like a hive mind or anything like that. So he's he's as much of an individual as you or I, but um, no, his he's his whole life is just serving, serving the mothers. Like that's kind of that's just kind of it for him. That's that's what he's been raised to do, trained to do. It's what he enjoys doing. Like that's he doesn't really have any like grand aspirations beyond that. As it is, such a position puts him in a higher, like, social status than most other males. So, like, he has no reason to aspire to be anything else. Do all spiders utilize quadrupedal mechanical chassis for their vessels, or do they make use of other types, like hover or tread ones? Alright, so, like, I've been kind of dreading this question, because, like, it's been something I've been thinking about since starting Arachnatron, and... I want to say yes, but that kind of, like, lays a precedent for stuff I might do later in Arachnatron that I don't necessarily want to do, but it, it, it makes sense from just, like, a storytelling perspective that they absolutely do have different types of legs, and they're not all quadrupeds. Like, 
the general I, I would say the most common like general use chassis is the quadruped just because it's very like versatile and what it can do and how it can move but like there are cases where like say there's workers who have treads or workers who have hovers or there's like st- stuff like that like there's specialty legs for like specialized jobs but um but yeah most most of them are quadrupeds but there are absolutely other types that exist are there formal distinctions between various kinds of imps? For example, are there casts of cyber imps, feral imps, or imp magi? Are they all simply unorganized opportunists? Hold on, I'm, I'm... I think I know what this one's asking. I'm not... I don't 100% understand the question again. I th- I think... I think I get it. Like, do... do Is there, like, an actual imp social structure? I think is... I think is what you're asking. And, um... No, not really. They all just kind of scatter about. They're they're all just organized opportunists. Like they could form like gangs and um, imps that are like more because there's a lot of like individuality along among imps, which is more than a lot of other demons. And um, so they can form like almost like tribe so i guess i guess there is like kind of organization but it's not like it's nothing like large scale it's very small scale like they can form like gangs or tribes but um they they can like appoint a leader usually based on who's the strongest hell the um the imps story for hot imp is he's an apprentice to an imp magi and he um killed his master to learn his secrets so there there is like some stru- it's disorganized structure if that I know that sounds like an oxymoron or whatever the fuck but like that's that's the best way to put it it's like fucking mad max out there with imps or like fallout no fallout's too organized i'm going back to the mad max thing it's like they're, they 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 have their gangs but they don't there's no like overarching hierarchy really in in hell the strong rule of the weak and even with imps that's usually how it goes how intelligent are the imps varies they can be um they can be smarter than humans or dumb as boxes of rocks like it it varies pretty wildly they all have like a base like understanding of what they can do but not all of them fully i kind of i kind of hint at this in legion but not all of them fully understand what they're fully capable of and they're usually just content living within their own means which isn't much and um yeah so it varies there are there are really smart imps that could that can absolutely fucking outsmart any average human at any point and there are imps that make pinkies look like fucking stephen hawking like they're they're they run they run a gambit a lot of them a lot of them are like really like short-tempered and aggressive though so it's hard to tell because um and uh this this is kind of comp a couple times but like demons i feel like this is a good time to explain this demons don't they're so they uh how do i how do i put this they just don't their brains just don't work like ours do like they don't feel emotion like we do they don't quite have the same like logic that we do so like a lot of this is this is kind of me this is kind of me just kind of doing like i don't want to say like a meta commentary but I want to say a lot of, like, media about demons, like, humanizes the demons too much in my eyes. So I'm trying I'm trying something different where demons are just fully 100%, like, completely alien to us. But it, it's hard to, like, explain that in a way that doesn't, like, accidentally rehumanize them. Because that's, like, not what I'm going for. But, um, 
it, it's I'm trying to it's I it's it's like trying to explain sounds to a deaf guy. I'm trying to no, that's not quite right. It's like trying to explain colors while using colors to explain the colors. Like, you know, I know that sounds like really fucking weird, but just kind of kind of work with me here. Trying to explain how demons work using like human terms for stuff is the best I can do. It's like I know I know what I mean in my head, but I don't know how to properly express it. But um yeah, just just know that demons don't like quite feel they don't feel things like we do. They don't think like we do. They don't come to the same conclusions we do. Or they can, but how they get there is totally different. And uh, that 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 factors into like how intelligent things can seem or be. Are the imps actively and purposefully oppressed by the higher demons? Um, yes. Oppressed implies that like they're active. That imps are like trying to um be. Oh, excuse me. Oppressed implies imps are like trying to be better than they are and they're being actively put down by greater demons, but like that's not really the case. Because imps just kind of. Demons know their place in the hierarchy and most of them just kind of accept it. Cases like the Baron are really, really rare because it's rare for a demon to have that much like individuality, if that makes sense. Again, they're not they're not quite a hive mind or anything like that, but they just kind of intrinsically know. They know their place. And they don't usually question it at all. The Baron in the Baron's case, his problem is he was alive before the brains took over and uh he he wants to go back to that. Whereas a lot of, most other like Barons didn't come into being until afterwards so they don't they just don't know any better so it's it's kind of difficult to explain i i feel like i did okay but i don't i don't i don't fucking know i'm flying off the seat of my pants right now like i I said that at the beginning of the video but like i feel like i need to uh need to reiterate that so i guess no they're not really being oppressed if an imp manages to become greater than it is no one like no other demons are out there trying to stop him like hell knight hell knights are not out there trying to put down imp mages or anything like that for for just just as one example how experienced are the fotg protagonists what are their mission records so far so all of them are really are you know they're they're really experienced in their uh subsequent like special forces like helga has a lot of like assassination and espionage missions under her belt working with the spetnaz uh john has a lot a lot a lot a lot of like oh, hell his profile mentions a couple of operations he's been in but it's it's all his very existence is fucking classified so Good luck getting any information about that. Wilhelm has a lot of like, he's he was like a frontline soldier and more or less still kind of does that kind of thing. Like they they all have, they all have experience under their belt and a lot of successful missions under their belts, which is why they were all selected to be on the team, the team as it's as it's unofficially called. I I, I don't really have a name for like their unit. They're just kind of the team, but. I should, I should probably come up with a name or something, but I don't know. What do you what do you call a fucking a robot, a half demon, a black guy, and a woman? Like it's fucking, that's just a group of people, you know? A people in a tin can, you know? Like what do you what do you what do you fucking call that? They're just operators operating, you know? Um, I I guess yeah. OFAC has done. He's done. His actually, Ofex's the only one that doesn't really have any experience outside of the team, because his like existence has been pretty much a fucking highly kept secret from the secret society that spawned him, or the secret or not really secret society, but like the organization that spawned him, because they've been they've been fighting like 
demons in one form or another for fucking centuries. But this is the first time there's been, like, an invasion of physically manifested demons before. But they've been prepared. And Ofek is their preparation. I hope I'm saying his name right. I don't actually know how to pronounce his name. Like, I just... When I was making the character, I literally just googled common Israeli names. And that was one of them. Um, So... I, I hope I'm saying it right. I, I think I am, but like maybe E's work weird. Maybe it's Ofeek. I doubt it, but may, maybe it is. But uh, yeah. So yeah, they they have they have a lot of experience. I'm not I'm not going to go into like super detailed mission reports of what they've done because I don't I don't I don't care nearly enough for that. So like I don't know. Just make shit up. Like they they've done a lot. They've pr- more than proven themselves. How has Father Ward found himself fighting Hellspawn on the front lines using Italian-made weaponry to boot? I mean, he's 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 from the Vatican, which is which is based out of Italy. Like that's that's how. But um, he's he's an exorcist. Like I don't I don't understand what the uh what the confusion is. Like he's an exorcist. He's operating out of the Vatican, which is in Italy, so he uses Italian weapons. Like, that's kind of that's kind of how the mod works. Like, I know he himself is an American, but he doesn't operate out of America, and doesn't work, he doesn't work with the American government, and he's kind of like a third-party contractor, more or less, hired by, not really hired by the UAC, but like, employed, I guess employed implies hired. They, they've employed his, the, the Vatican has sent him to assist in the, uh, assist the team. Because a lot of, a lot of UAC, uh, special operations forces right now, since the demonic incursion, have some kind of religious specialist with them because, uh, exercising and holy stuff, like all that, all that shit, like, works on demons, even in their physical form. So, um... Yeah, Ward is just, he's just the guy assigned to the team, like, that. that's it, he's hes an exorcist, he has a long history of exercising demons, this is his first time dealing with physical ones, but uh, bullets work just as well as scripture on physical demons, so that's why he uses guns at all, like, I, I realize that might be part of the question, but yeah, that's... That's it. That's 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 kind of all there is to it. How much of a cyborg is the SZ protagonist? Uh, I I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. Honestly, it's not important at all. So, like you know, I know I've said before he's like a Ghost in the Shell style cyborg. So really, like, take that and run with it as you will. He's not like. Togusa levels of not cybernized, but, you know, like, you know, just, just, just kind of roll with it and with whatever. Like, Soldier Z, that's just kind of a throwaway line in Soldier Z to explain why he's durable or she's durable. Like, the, 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 the character in Soldier Z is like a non-character. Like, that's kind of the point. Because, like, Soldier Z isn't really, like, it's it's literally just me messing with code and spriting techniques and sound techniques and stuff the fact that it's a cohesive mod at all is a miracle so really it's not really something you're supposed to think about so i don't know don't but like if you do you like you're on your own i'm i uh yeah you're 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 just on your own it's not really something i've thought about it's not something i'm going to think about so yeah come up with your own shit keep it to yourself though because like i'm not i'm not really interested or share it, like, I don't know, I'm not your dad, I'm not your boss, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Alright, last last question of this cluster. Which of the demons and spiders are immortal? Um, so, all demons are immortal. Like, they, they do not die of old age. They do not age at all, actually. So, I mean, they can get, like, scars, and just the very nature of hell can, like, cause burns and shit like the baron for example he's kind of a like darker shade i don't really talk about i don't really 
have like a canon appearance of any of the like hot pro tags but like the baron is like the one thing i would do say is that the baron is like a darker shade darker color just because his skin is all like fucking burnt and scarred from living in hell for fucking centuries and just you know hell is a violent dangerous place and he's that he's living his best life there so he's he's got he's got he shows it so but yeah demons don't really age um they do like they do have things that kind of show passage of time like their horns get longer their nails get sharper but it's not like they have life phases or anything so outside of caco demons caco demons absolutely are born they absolutely do age and they absolutely get old and die but that's it all the other demons they they they're they're all effectively immortal spiders is another fact another thing um so spiders they um they're not immortal um the females the spider masterminds they can be damn near immortal because they can live for like thousands upon thousands of years before they even get like old and start degrading like mentally and physically degrading so they're effectively immortal but like they do eventually die of old age arachnotrons also have a pretty long lifespan they can live for like hundreds of years spiders spiders in general have like really low birth rates to like compensate for the fact that they uh have such long lifespans and their male to female ratio is like nine to one which is why you see so many more arachnotrons than you do spider masterminds and their low like their slow birth rates is also why you don't just you don't see them nearly as much as you see other demons yeah i'm lore explaining map ratios fuck off um so yeah so all demons except caco demons are immortal and spiders are not immortal but they're fucking pretty fucking close obviously they can all be killed through unnatural means like you stab a fucking arch file enough times it's going to fucking die like clearly like we there we've all we've all played the game we know so yeah and that was that so I'm not gonna lie, I had a pretty good time with this, so, I don't know, expect to see one of these again in the near future. Anyway, uh, I plan on becoming a little more active in terms of, like, modding and making content in general going forward over the next few months. Still not nearly to the pace some of you might be used to, but I'll at least be confirming that I'm alive. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and yeah. Thanks for watching.